guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video I showed you removal of the pan on the passenger side. Um, it's all the same repeat on the driver's side, except we've got that extra cross member down here uh, under the driver's feet there. All I've done is uh, I drilled a series of holes along the, um, you know, the pinch weld, and then I was able to cut it out and section it out, just like we did in the last one, and then so I can get my tool in between the joint there. Um, one of the, I think it was Bob, uh, mentioned in the last comments, I think he worked on some BMWs, he made some good points. Uh, I'm trying to save as much of the original metal as possible, but it comes a point where if you just blow through and you can weld on a new uh, strip of metal to be able to pinch well, then you're getting rid of a large section of possibly surface rusted material anyway. So it's up to you where you want to draw the line there. Um, but uh, thanks Bob for that, that was a good point. Um, so uh, I'm not going to show you the removal of the floor on this side, it's much the same thing. But what I did want to show you, is we're going to do a little test area here. Let me get you in close and see all this muck right near the transmission tunnel and a few tools that I'm going to use and I've just picked up a tool, it seems to work really well. So anyway, let me get in close uh, and show you what I'm, uh, I'm going to do to remove all this heavy under seal. So first up is this uh, removal tool I got from Eastwood. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I am quite impressed with it. It's an air tool, so you do have to have a decent air compressor to run it. Uh, and as I say, I use this clawed type um, wire brush attachment. It works really well. I think it might get a little overwhelmed with this heavy, heavy tar stuff under here. Where it gets a little thinner, it's okay. Let's just try this small section here and see how it does. <laughs> So you can see now a large portion of that is a lot of tar and grease and muck uh, and this is the original looks like overspray and I think they call this cosmoline or something but anyway whatever seal they used and you can see the bare metal there um, so you can see this takes quite a bit of effort there so let's move on to this section and I will show you another way of getting it off where you do need a Air, um, an air conditioner, <laughs> a fire extinguisher with you because we're going to use play a little heat on this area. This is kind of a smelly stuff, so I just play it around this area here. Um, just a light blow, it will probably catch fire a little bit, and you can dab it out, but just uh, be wary of this way because obviously you're playing with naked flames, and obviously all your fuel lines and all that are gone anyway, so you should be good. So let's try this. Just play it around for a little bit. Get it bubbling. Throw it out and then you can see what kind of job this would be. I probably could have put more heat on that. But it's definitely a smelly job. Now, once you've broke free main grime, let's get a little bit more heat on there. You get the idea. It's miserable work, but along with, say you do a bit of that, right? Then you switch over to the air tool. So 
See, right down the metal there. So that combination works pretty well. Um, this is actually a fairly worn out brush. Uh, they work amazingly well fresh out the box. Probably about oh, 15 bucks or something for one of those. So that's that little combination. Let's move on to this area. Uh, and uh, I'll show you the next tool that I just picked up and it works surprisingly well. Right, next section, needle scaler. Uh, just a series of rods. Normally it's used to break off uh, rust and stuff like that. I was trying it back in and it seemed to work pretty well. It probably won't work very well now that you're on camera. But anyway, let's have a go, shall we? I think this area overwhelmed it a bit because this was really laden in grease. So let me pick a slightly different area where it's not so greasy. So it's a combination of things really. This is this works great um, to get in, obviously getting in loose rust and stuff like that. But let me move you over and see how it does in a less oily area. So let's try this area here. Not so greasy. a combination of that and this wire tool pretty good and obviously you know it's going to need degreasing and sanding before any uh, epoxy primer goes on here um, so yeah the uh, consensus is a combination the, the flame yeah I'm not over keen on using the flame in here because of obvious reasons but this works great on the dry stuff let's pick an area towards the back here just for a final experiment with this again in a really dry area near the fuel tank area another thing with this tool you know it's going to detect any dodgy metal, isn't it? You know, so if you've got any rusty areas and this blows through, don't panic. It's just that it's found some areas you need to repair, basically. So, anyway, so this has got a kind of a gumminess to it, but it's not all saturated with oil. So, this is obviously where the fuel pump sits at the back here and right near all the suspension arms and all that stuff. So, let's see how this does here, shall we? I should be putting my gloves on. You're probably all saying that. Bit of interrupted uh, underseal there, see? So you probably use that to get started. tiny surface rust there and that's not blown through but that's you know an area where um, moisture got in under this under seal of this stuff so you can see how well it works oh the old airbrush <laughs> there you go so yeah that seems to work pretty well so um I'm going to carry on with breaking spot welds and digging out spot welds. I just thought you'd like to see uh, a couple of different techniques to getting this old under seal off. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little short burst there. Just an interim video on these four pans. As I say, uh, we're taking it out, you know, depending on your situation, you're going to probably have to make repairs ready to receive the new pans. And also another gentleman in the comments made a really good point. He actually bought three pans. 
and so one of which then he can cut a long extension from the spare one, make one join and then the remaining one just has two joints and then he's got factory metal. I'm probably just going to use the metal that I saved off of here but that's a, uh, another good um, idea he had because they're a few hundred bucks a pan and really when you're doing a project this it's not too bad to buy that uh, as a little extra to save you a little time and make it nice. Um, so yeah, this is hard work. I asked the wife whether she wanted to come out and help me, but she wasn't interested for some reason. I'm not sure why. We wanted to go to church or something. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please hit like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Not sure when it will be, because obviously you see this work takes a little time, but I'll shoot a video as I think, uh, uh, you know, show you all the important things I think you'd want to see. So take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.